In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, you are all welcome to this moment of brief reflection on the Word of God for this seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time, year two with Father B.C. We shall be reflecting today on the theme of sacrificial love. Today, our reading, especially the Gospel, brings this reality to us, which we need to reflect upon so that our lives can be better in this world. We must be rest assured, my dear friends, that whatever sacrifice we would ever make for loving others will never go in vain. And that is the assurance we are given today. More than ever, our world today needs sacrificial love. Now, sacrificial love is a Christian kind of love. And love is never Christian until it hurts. What distinguishes the Christian love from all other kinds of love is its hurting nature. Loving the unlovable and forgiving the unforgivable. And these are very strong words that Jesus brings to us today. Though good in themselves, the love we show for our family and for our friends are not good enough. They are not only an obligation, but they also possess the characteristics of being able to be paid back someday. So we love to receive love in return. This cannot therefore be a measure of the Christian love since they are expected to be repaid. They are so because even the pagans and the sinners do likewise. They practice this economic kind of love. Luke chapter 6 verse 33 as Jesus says that to, the, to us today. If we greet or love or assist only those who love us or assist us in return. So to build a better world, we need the Christian love. That love which never expects payment. That love shown to a total stranger, to a pauper, to the destitute, to the enemy. A purely sacrificial love for the good of the other is most certainly indispensable in our life as Christians. As much as without pain there is no gain, so can we not build a better world without this sacrificial love. That is the Christian kind of love. A love stripped of self-sacrifice is inadequate. Just as to enjoy, let's say, an omelette, we need to break an egg. So we need to hurt in order to create a better world. We see this in Jesus when the sorrows of Good Friday were swallowed up in the joys of Easter Sunday. And that is the kind of love we are called to. We must love until it hurts. So we must ask ourselves, friends, so what is that sacrificial love? Now, love by its nature is about the other person. It is the only act that has its meaning in the ability to diffuse. Flowers, for example, are not good in themselves if they are not beautiful to others. So love is something that can never keep, one can never keep to oneself because self-love is no love at all. By its nature, love must be oriented towards the other person. So it is about the other, not about me. So it is the otherness that determines whether love is sacrificial or economical or even a loan. So in the case of a love that is like a loan, payment will be accepted back. But in the case of a love that is not, there is no payment, no expectation in reward. So in the Christian understanding, this kind of love is raised to the order of the virtues because it is done for the sake of the other. It is done for the sake of Christ. Therefore, my friends, it takes sacrificial love to be able to treat our enemies good. Now, naturally, we would wish our enemies dead. We would want them to come to disgrace. We wish them ill luck. We want their destruction. That is what we would naturally want for our enemies. However, Jesus changes this trajectory today. He says to us, Love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Luke 6, 27. What a statement. Unthinkable, absurd, impossible we may think. In reality, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But there are no impossibilities with God. Therefore, my friends, Jesus actually enjoins us to oblige here. On our own, we cannot achieve this. But for the sake of Christ, with the gift of his grace, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to truly love until it hurts. All we need to do is to conform to Christ in obedience. The Adamic nature in us seems to draw us back always. But with Jesus, in whose blood we have been washed clean, 
We can do that. Therefore, my friends, we are called and reminded in our second reading today to bear the likeness of the man from heaven. 1 Corinthians 15, 49. We must bear the likeness of Christ and imitate him. In our first reading, we see Christ today in David, whose enemy soul was placed into his hands. But David did exactly what Christ asked us to do. Love your enemy. David said, God forbid that I lay my hands on the Lord's anointed. This is one of the most easily misquoted parts of the scripture. We are all anointed by the virtue of our baptism. So why do we think that we can do bad to others and be justified? While others are tagged anointed. We are all anointed. So we are created in the image and likeness of God. So from that perspective, let us think about this and never try to hurt somebody because he is not tagged the Lord's anointed. So in our lives, we ought to reflect on whose life ours are modeled. We see in Christ's reflection of God's love, his generous compassion. That generous compassion that is bountiful. For if God were to mark our guilt, who would survive? Psalm 130 verse 3. No one would survive. But his compassion is what makes us survive. So God never applies the rigors of his justice to our human frailty. So why do we do it to each other? As humans, it is possible to dismiss compassion from our hearts. But you know, God never does that. And so we need to imitate him since we are created in his nature and likeness. Do we wish to be true children of God? Let us each act as such. We are the ambassadors of love. Let us pass on love that we ourselves have received. As much as light remains light only by diffusing its light to others, so can we also remain within God's love only by loving. However, we must note it is never an easy thing to love. This is more so to love the unlovable and to forgive the unforgivable. This is always difficult. It is a painful sacrifice to which we have been called. And because of its beautiful nature, that's what makes it Christ-like. The difficulty in bearing. Now, the greatest pain in love is to love in vain. But we do not love in vain, my dear friends. Our sacrifice will never go without reward. Give, it shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Luke 6, 38. That's the assurance Jesus gives us today. So we must never give up on loving. The sacrifice will not go in vain. Let us choose to be proactive friends instead of reaction in loving. Never pay back injury with injury. Instead, let us generate love. Where there is hatred, let us generate pardon. Where there is injury, and that is the Christian way. That is the sacrificial way of love to which we have all been called, difficult as it may. Finally, let us be open to God's grace without which this is not possible. For unless we allow the grace of God to speak to us, to direct us, to be our guide, we will find ourselves going back to our Adamic nature, trying to give reasons why this person should not be loved back, this person should not be assisted, the other brother should not be helped. But Jesus is saying, we must go the extra mile. And that extra mile to which we must go is that mile in which love hurts. So my dear friends, let us ask ourselves, do we love our brothers and sisters out of ease? Do we find it very accommodating to love without any pain? The Christian way is that it must be painful. If we are looking simply for our comfort zones in loving, then remember, we have not yet arrived at that level of the Christian love. But it's to be able to go out of our comfort zones to love the unlovable, to forgive the unforgivable. That is when we would best resemble Christ. My dear friends, let us pray that God will give us his Holy Spirit to be able to assist us to love in a sacrificial way so that the hearts we experience during this love can even be penance sometimes for our own shortcomings. And in that way, our world can be a better place. Only God knows how many souls we will have been willing for him for trying to love the person that is unlovable and to forgive the person that is unforgivable. As we do that, may God bless us and assist us. And may the blessings of the Almighty God 
the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon us and remain with us now and forever. Amen. You have a beautiful Sunday celebration ahead, a blessed and fruitful week ahead. And never forget, Jesus loves you. Happy Sunday.